Here is why the integrating factor method works. So let's start with the ODE, which is simply y prime plus p of t y equals f of t. And suppose our integrating factor is g of t. Factor is g of t. And really our goal is to find a formula for g. And in order to do that, what is integrating factor? We multiply by g and try to find a product rule form. So once again, we had y prime plus p of t y equals f of t. And the whole idea is just to multiply by the integrating factor. So g times y prime plus that equals g times f of t. And so what we then get is so y prime g plus pgy equals fg. So that's just, again, taking ODE and multiplying by, by g. Now, what's the idea? Let's look at the left-hand side. And the idea is to find g so that the left-hand side becomes a derivative. Because notice that's what helped us when solving those differential equations, just by integrating everything. So idea, find g. Let me write that nicely. So that the left-hand side, so uh, abbreviated as LHS, becomes a derivative, namely gy prime, which is g prime y plus gy prime. I know it looks so weird seeing it very abstractly like that, but just compare with the previous example where we had e to the t cube y prime, right? We're able to transform our equation into e to the t cube y prime. Previous example or video. So again, what we have is this expression in blue. What we want is the second expression in blue. But notice they look very similar. They actually have a y prime g in common. So simply comparing the two. The two, we get the following y prime g plus pgy equals g prime y plus gy prime. And again, the cool thing is This expression, so y, the y prime g's, they cancel out. And then we then get pgy, gy equals g prime y. Now, y will cancel it out because, I mean, unless f is the zero, so f is a zero function. We can assume y is non-zero. But this cancels out. Otherwise, there's no interesting expression for g. Okay. 
And then what we end up getting is something very interesting. G prime, which is PG. And why is that interesting? Because this is precisely an ODE for our integrating factor. Integrating factor. In other words, to solve an ODE, we have to solve an ODE. It's like, Yo, dog, I heard you like this class. So if I put an ODE inside an ODE so you can be confused while being confused. Literally this. That said, and that's the second part of this video, it's not too bad to solve for G because we can use separation of variables. But once we find G, then we're G using sep of R because, well, G prime is P times G. So G prime of T is P of T, G of T, and then DG over DT. It's like the BGs, but the DGs here equals P of T times G. And again, cross multiply. So DG equals P G. So maybe P of T G DT and then divide by G. So DG over G equals P of T times t of dt. So this is the analog of put all the y's on one side, all the t's on the other side, and then of course just integrate. So dg over g equals integral p of t dt. And that's where our friend ln DeGeneres comes in. So ln of absolute value of g equals integral of p of t dt, and to be pedantic, let's put an extra constant, even though the constant is in the indefinite integral. And then g is that then becomes e to the integral of p of t dt plus c. And then g then becomes plus minus e to the c e to the integral of p of t dt. But then that just becomes a generic constant and you're left with g is c e to the integral of p of t dt. And last but not least, since we just need one integrating factor, so since we just need one function that helps us solve the problem, we can really choose c anything we want so let C equals one for simplicity. And then last but not least, we get G of T is E to the integral of P of T dt. And this is how we end up getting the integrating factor. That's how we do.